All right, guys, this is a video I've been looking forward to making for a long time. A while back, I discovered how to do express routing using decorators. Now, I know that there are some packages out there that do this for you automatically already, but I thought it would be really cool to learn how to do it ourselves. And when I finally figured out how to get it to work, I was really happy. TypeScript decorators aren't that easy to work with because they don't intuitively work like other languages. That being said, some of the mechanisms are still the same and we can take advantage of packages that already exist to help us in this process. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to do all of our routing using TypeScript decorators on classes. There's a couple prerequisites for this video and that's a couple alterations to your tsconfig.json and your controller definitions when you make them have to be inside classes. Decorators only work inside classes in TypeScript, so it's a limitation we're gonna to have to work within. That being said, if you're OCD about code like I am for absolutely no reason and everything has to line up, TypeScript decorators make everything look that much better. The project I already have open on the screen is a basic API that I've done in a previous video. I'll have the link in the description below. You don't have to start with the same API that I'm using. However, the code is already ready for you to use and follow along with. So in the links below, you'll have this, and the finished product as well. So the first thing we're gonna need for this is to install one package on top of the project that I already have. Again, if you have your own project, you can figure it any way you like, but for this one that I'm starting with, the only package we need to install is called Reflect Metadata. Reflect Metadata is an awesome package that allows you to take advantage of the decorators that you attach to the classes and its functions and variables. Next, because we're gonna be importing the reflect metadata package just one time in the server, and we're not gonna actually be using the package directly, only the globals it defines, inside of the type section in your compiler options, after jest, make sure you add reflect metadata so the types are picked up by the compiler. Also, you have to make sure that the experimental decorators is set to true. This is set to false by default in TypeScript, so make sure you have this or reflect metadata isn't gonna work. At the top of your file, your server.ts file, just include the reflect metadata with a basic import that doesn't have a from, just import the package directly like you see here. Next, create a library folder, and inside of it, we're gonna create a file called routes.ts. Here, I'm just gonna define a type that I'm gonna be using inside of my different reflect metadata calls. I only wanna define this once, so I'm gonna put it in a file by itself here. So at the top of the file, we're gonna import express and request handler from express. We're gonna export our type route handler. You can call this whatever you want, but I'm just gonna call it our route handler. And this is gonna be equal to a map. The key of the map is gonna be the key of express, which means that any variable or function inside of the express object is gonna be a key here. The reason we're doing this is because we want access directly to the gets, the deletes, the posts, the puts, the patches, any methods you're gonna be using, you wanna be able to actually access the key to keep this as type safe as possible. I'm doing this key of express just to keep everything within the bounds of TypeScript and I'm trying to avoid the any key. And the value is gonna be another map. What this map is gonna be is a map of strings and then a request handler array. The string is gonna be the actual path of the route. So for example, like forward slash main slash health check, and then the request handler array is going to be the uh, function where you actually are doing your operations on the request. So this is where you have the function that has the request, the response, and the next function. The reason that this is an array is because I like to give the option of passing in some middleware to execute before the final function. You don't have to do this. You could just make this a single value if you want, but I like to do an array just in case you never know what's gonna happen in the future. Now that we've defined the route handler, I'm gonna create the controller before I create any of the decorators. So make a controllers folder, and I'm just gonna declare a main controller here, main.ts file, and this is just gonna have some basic functions in it. It's not gonna be related to any model or anything, just for this example. At the top of our file, we're gonna import the request, response, and next function from express, as we usually do. Then you're gonna create a class. I'm gonna call mine main controller, and then I'm gonna export it as the default at the bottom. You can export the class directly. You can do whatever you want to do here. Inside of the main controller, I'm going to define my health check here, and I'm going to call this function get health check. And then the variables inside the function are obviously going to be my request response and next function. 
And then inside of it, much like the health check I did in the last video, I'm gonna just put that in here with a little bit of logging. You're gonna see this logging.info that I'm using. This is a custom logging class I declared in the last video. You don't have to use this. You can just use console.info or console.log. Return your response status of 200 like you do in the other health check and just put hello world or really whatever you want. So this controller is actually pretty much finished for our health check. The only things we need to do now is define our decorators to make Express know that we actually want this to be a route. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a decorators folder and we're gonna start with a decorator that defines the controller. The controller decorator is gonna be responsible for defining the prefix of the route. So whatever your controller is taking care of, so if it's taking care of your books, your authors, or your receipts, or whatever it is, Basically inside of the controller, you can declare the prefix that all of the routes are gonna have. That way they're all uniform. So for example, you would have your receipts forward slash get or your receipts forward slash create. All of that will be defined with the prefix that you put inside of this controller. So to create a decorator, first we're gonna export a function called controller. We're gonna pass in a base route, that's a string, and we're gonna give it a default value of empty. That way, if we forget to pass in a value, it's still just gonna apply it to the main routes of the actual API. They just won't have a prefix in front of them. So whatever you define your route as, that's gonna be the actual path in your API. And you're gonna see how this works later. Now for a decorator, it has to return a function on the inside, so we're gonna do that. And decorators that go on top of classes only have a target, and this is gonna be of the any type. The target is the actual classes constructor itself. So inside of this, we're actually gonna define our reflect metadata here. And how that's gonna go is we're gonna use the reflect namespace. We're gonna do dot define metadata. We're gonna call this metadata key, the base route, just how we have it above. Its value is gonna be the base route and we're gonna attach it to our target. And our target is gonna be the constructor of this controller. So back inside our main controller, above our class, all you have to do is put the at symbol and put controller and it'll auto import for you. And we don't have to actually pass anything into the function because there's a default string. And then that's it. Now we know that this is a controller. Obviously we have to define how we're gonna connect it all. But as far as the controller definition goes, this is all you have to do. Next, we're gonna define a route.ts file inside of our decorators. And this is gonna define the functions as routes. So this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. At the top, you can import express from express and you can import your request handler as well. And while you're at it, import the route handler that we defined earlier that's gonna set up our maps. Similar to the controller, we're gonna export a function route, and inside of this one, we're gonna return a little bit more with this function. Decorators on the inside, they actually return three properties. So first let's define the route, and then we'll define the decorator. What we wanna pass in is our method, which is gonna be our key of express. Next, we wanna pass in our path, which is gonna define how we route this actual function. This can be set to a default of an empty string as well. And then after this, use the spread operator and pass in our middleware. And this is gonna be a request handler array. So you can put in as much middleware here as you want. Now for the variables for the return, we're gonna do our target of any, that's gonna actually target the whole class, not the constructor. A key, that's a string. And then a descriptor, which is gonna be our property descriptor. Now you can attach this to a function and it'll treat it like a normal decorator. So here we're gonna define a const, our route path is just equal to our path. I like to separate this variable just in case you wanna do anything to it later, but you don't actually have to do this part. Next, we're gonna define our const route handlers. This is gonna be of a type route handler and this is gonna be equal to reflect.getMetadata. We're gonna look for the route handlers key on our target. And if we can't find this, we're gonna actually just assign this with the or to a new map. So if this hasn't been created yet from another route definition, just create a brand new map. Check to see if the route handlers dot has the method is false. And if it is, do a route handlers dot set, pass in the method and a new map on the inside. So this is our second layer map now that will hold our request handlers. And then after this check, you can do a route handlers dot get, pass in the method, we know that this is gonna work because we've set it, and then set the route path, and then what you're gonna do is pass in an array, and you're gonna do the spread operator again, you're gonna pass in the middleware, and then the descriptor.value. The descriptor.value is the actual execution of the method, and if you wanted to do things at runtime instead of beforehand like we're doing here, 
if you altered the descriptor.value, you could do things to the function as it runs. But we're not going to do that in this video. We're simply going to declare our routes here. So just pass into the descriptor.value. That's all you have to do. Finally, at the bottom, do a reflect.define metadata and then pass in the root handler's name. The root handler's is the value and then the target as the target. And that's all you have to do for this decorator. Now back inside the controller, above the get health check, define our route decorator. And the first thing you're gonna pass in is the actual key of express. And you're gonna see a whole list populated for you. So we're gonna pick get because this is a get request. And then the path is just gonna be forward slash health check. And now everything inside the controller is done. The only thing we have to do now is apply our route definitions to the application in our server file. But first go to the server file and delete the section under define controller routing. We're gonna get rid of the old health check that was here. And this is where we're gonna call our define routes function. Create a modules folder and then create another routes.ts file. And here we're gonna import express and request handler from express. Now we're gonna export our function and it's gonna be called define routes. And it's gonna take a list of controllers which can just be defined as any, and an application of the express type. This is our application from the server.ts file or your router if that's how you have it defined. And now this is where we extract all of our reflect metadata and pass everything in here. So create a for loop that loops over the controllers.length and define your controller on the inside of it. After you've defined the controller, next we're gonna define the root handlers. And what we're gonna do for that is we're gonna do a const route handlers that's equal to reflect.getMetadata the route handlers from the controller. And we're also going to define our controller path. And that's going to be equal to our reflect.getMetadata from our base route. But instead of controller, we're going to do our controller.constructor. To make things a little bit more type safe, you can apply the route handler as the type for the route handlers. And you can apply string for the type of controller path. Next, we're going to define uh, const methods. And that's going to be equal to array.from and our route handlers dot keys. So this will tell us all the different methods that we actually have inside of this controller. Create a for loop for the methods and on the inside, make sure you define your method. And then create a routes object that's gonna be equal to route handlers dot get that method. So now you have all of the routes defined for that method. So all of the get routes or all of the post routes. And if the routes exist, you're going to create another variable called route names, and that's going to be your array from your route.keys. And then finally, create one more for loop, and this is going to go over the route names. On the inside, define the handlers equal to your routes.get to your route names. And if the handlers exist, what you're going to do now is call the application. But instead of calling application.get or application.post, you're gonna pass in the method as a key. And then inside of your function call, you're gonna pass in the controller path plus whatever the route name is. So your route names at K and then comma your handlers. And then right after this, what I like to do is log the route that I'm loading and then pass in the method and then the controller path plus the route names again. And then this is all that we should need to define everything properly. So all we have to do now is go back to our server.ts file and then call this function and it will apply all of our routes automatically from our metadata. So in the define controller routing where we had the health check before and we got rid of it, just simply put your define routes here. And this is going to take your array of controllers and then the application. So here I'm going to pass in my main controller inside of an array and then I'm going to pass in my application. And I think this is everything we need. So let's go ahead and start this and let's see what happens. And oh, actually, sorry, I forgot to do one thing. And that's actually the controllers in the for loop. I forgot to actually initialize them as a class. I just called the class directly. So let's go ahead and fix that. And how we fix that is make the const controller equal to a new controllers at I and then the empty function call at the end. And now this should work properly. So let's start it back up. And you can see that inside of the define controller routing, our get forward slash health check route has been defined from our decorators. So this is, this is great. So let's open up our favorite tester called Postman. 
and simply do our localhost forward slash health check. And you can see that the hello world is working. If you go back and look at the logs, you can see that when we tried the main health check at first, that doesn't exist anymore. But when we switch it to health check, it works just fine. So the routing through the decorators is working properly. The cool thing about these decorators is for the functions, you can have multiple calls per function. So underneath the get, let's actually put a post route for the health check. So all you have to do is pretty much the same thing, just copy and paste it. But instead of get, you can just put post. And let's just say inside of the return, I just want to pass in uh, anything that we pass in from the body, just slap it into the hello world message so we can see it working properly. All we got to do there is just use the spread operator request.body inside of the return JSON. And then if we go to our postman and switch this to JSON in a post request and just pass in some arbitrary key and value, you can put whatever you want here and you hit send, you can see, hey, now the post request is working as well. So that's pretty cool too. Finally, in a previous video, uh, one of my subscribers actually pointed out that this REST client plugin right here is a pretty cool way to test as well. Inside of this REST folder, I have this main.rest file, and this is just going to have a couple calls to it. So make these equal to whatever routes or testing you want to do. So let's test the forward slash health check and send the request. And what you'll see on the right hand side here is a response pop up. So this is essentially the same thing as doing in a postman, but you can just do it inside of VS Code if you don't want to open another program as well. And just like that, that's how you define your express routing using decorators. I'm going to build off this and any other API videos I do this year are going to be related by using decorators, whether it comes to authentication, validation, using MySQL or MongoDB, Mongoose. I'm going to do it all through decorators to show you how easy this is and how repeatable and scalable it is so that you can have functions defined with six or seven decorators and never ever have to worry about rewriting things from scratch. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning back in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or if you're feeling real generous, you can buy me a coffee. See you next time.